Let's be real, editing in Premiere Pro can be super frustrating. Some things just don't make sense. Like, why can't you just resize a mask proportionately? This has bothered me for years. I would create guides and then I would zoom in on the program monitor and very closely try to reposition all of the points and just fingers crossed, hope that it would all be straight and proportionate. Turns out that there is actually a very simple solution. What you wanna do is you wanna hover over the corner of the mask and when you see this icon, hit shift and you'll see a change to the expansion icon. Now you can proportionally scale up or down the mask. The next one is another one that is just so annoying. And when I say the word speed, you already know what I'm about to say. If you change the speed of a clip in Premiere Pro and you then wanna add the warp stabilizer effect to stabilize the footage, Premiere Pro just won't let you. It just won't. The order in which you add the effects doesn't matter either, it just won't let you. One way to solve this is to add one of the two effects to the clip first, then right click, click on nest, create a nested sequence, and then add the other effect to that. Another way to solve this, which is my preferred way, is the following. If you've already shot a bunch of clips at 50, 60, 100, or 120 frames per second with the intention of slowing it down anyway, don't slow it down on the timeline. Instead, slow it down when it's already in the bin. Select all of those clips and then right click, click on modify and then interpret footage. Then select assume your frame rate and then enter the frame rate of your quote unquote real time footage, which is probably 24 or 25 frames per second, depending on your location. Now all of those clips are all slowed down so you can just drag and drop them on the timeline and add the stabilizer effect to it with no issue. This also saves a lot of time because now you do not have to remap the speed of every single clip when you put it on the timeline. Now, if you've ever lost a keyframe because you have shortened the clip, for example, you do not need to go on the timeline and extend that clip to find that keyframe. There is actually a fix for this that every single Premiere Pro editor needs to know, and it's a little bit hidden, so pay attention. Click on the little hamburger menu next to effect controls and then unselect pin to clip. This will be selected by default. So when you do unselect it, you will now actually be able to find the keyframe and just delete it in the effect controls tab. Speaking of losing things, I've had some mini panic attacks in the past where I would drag a recording onto the timeline and there's no audio. Where did my audio go? Did I ruin an entire recording? Did I forget to turn the microphone on? Like, I swear, I swear it had audio. I check in the source monitor, it has audio. Why is it not showing up on the timeline? This used to do my head in. Like it was one of the biggest mysteries. I just didn't get it. And before I tell you the solution to this, cause it's actually very simple. I wanna know if this is something that you can relate to cause please don't make me feel alone in this. Turns out that what you have to do is just um, select the audio track on the timeline. It's that easy. Up until this day, sometimes something still happens to me, which don't ask me how, it's another mystery to me. And that is that an audio file gets missing. Thankfully, we can F it. No, not F a fuck, F a frame. I know, kind of disappointing. Pressing F will open up the source monitor at the exact frame with the exact in and out points of that clip. So then you can just drag the audio back to the timeline, make sure to link it up by hitting Control or Command L and it is fixed. Since we're talking about the F of frustrations, don't you just wish that Premiere Pro was smart enough that when you put a 1080p clip on a 4K timeline, it would resize it automatically to fit the frame. The good thing is that Premiere Pro is kind of smart, so we can tell it once to do this and it will do this for every single clip. All we gotta do to teach Premiere Pro how to do this is go to our settings then go to media and then here where it says default media scaling, set it to set to frame size. Okay, here's another one that is just not it, man. Have you ever tried to copy and paste something in Premiere Pro? Right, just sucks. Something that is so simple is just not simple in Premiere Pro, but it actually can be because instead of using Ctrl C and Ctrl V, what you can do is you can hit Alt or Option if you're on a Mac as you drag the clip. And then when you release it, you have duplicated the clip. If you've ever watched my friends or my tutorials, you probably have heard of the tip to nest clips. Very simply put, if you have five layers and you nest it all together, you just group it together into one layer. So this simplifies the timeline and it's just easy for the eyes. But if you want to unnest this, 
it is not that simple anymore. Because when you right click on it, there is no option to unnest it. What you could do is you could potentially open up the nested sequence by double clicking on it, then selecting all of those clips and then drag those back onto the main timeline. However, in my opinion, the best workaround is the following. Locate your nested sequence in your project bin and then drag that to the timeline. But before you do that, you want to make sure that this button is unselected. Otherwise, it's just going to show up as a nested sequence. And by unselecting it, you'll drag the content of the nested sequence to the timeline, which is exactly what we want. If you use Premiere Pro on a Mac, you've probably noticed a shift in colors between your project and your exported video in QuickTime. Now for years, the fix was to use a gamma compensation lot when you're exporting the video in order to get it the same. Now there is actually a way easier fix. The fix is to just update to the latest version of Premiere Pro and then open up the Lumetri color panel. And then in the settings tab, change the viewer gamma to 1.0. 9.6. What is really important to know though, if you're going to change it to 1.96, it's going to look perfect for Apple users. However, for Windows viewers and TV viewers, it's going to look a lot darker. And that is because I'm not going to get into the technicalities because honestly, I don't really understand it myself, but it just used, it's because there is different gammas for different devices. To be honest, you probably didn't even notice it. So it's just what it is. And if you want to learn more about color correction in Premiere Pro, then make sure that you watch this video right here. And of course, don't forget to subscribe.